So today I want to talk about the dark fiction I've been reading recently, which includes horror and thriller books, and the theme of the last few weeks has been getting back to the basics, or specifically reading the books that I want to read, which sounds really obvious, but for anyone who does this as a creator, you understand the pressure to follow certain video trends, follow book releases, and often again I'm preparing videos like that cosmic horror video, and I don't really love that subgenre, but I decided to read it because I thought it would make for an interesting video. And so I wanted to really get back to reading the good stuff, the books that I just love, the authors that I love, the themes and plots that I love over and over again. So I have some great books to recommend, at least books that I enjoyed, so hopefully you'll find something here too. All that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk about The Teacher by Frieda McFadden, and this is a thriller book that is following a few different perspectives, and so first we follow this young girl going to school. You find out that last year something happened, there was possibly or possibly not an affair with a teacher or a predator relationship, really, and so because of that situation, the previous teacher was fired. Now this girl is trying to move on from the ugliness of her past and get a fresh start. She's really fallen in love with poetry, and there is a new teacher who is really there to support her passion. And so she forms a connection with this other male teacher. However, we also follow the story from the perspective of that teacher's wife. And they have a complicated relationship. You find out that not a lot is going on in the bedroom and there's all sorts of different suspicions being thrown around throughout the story. I don't wanna get any further into the plot because half the fun, again, with a thriller is figuring that stuff out for yourself and seeing those twists and turns. I don't wanna oversell the book. I will suggest that if you read a lot of thrillers, you'll be able to guess where some of this is going, but it was fun. It was a ride. Now, I realize that not everyone loves to read books that deal with this subject matter, and I am someone who's drawn to books like Lolita and a lot of other books written in that style, like My Dark Vanessa. So for me, I was not afraid to dive into there, but even if you're someone who's a little bit iffy about the topic, I'll say that while it definitely addresses those topics. I felt like it was done in an appropriate way. It doesn't get into a lot of detail. It doesn't sensationalize or romanticize the topic. Instead, it's very clear who the culprits are once the story kind of unravels and you get to see everything. I think like there's no moral questionableness of the author's intent is what I want to say. And so I like this one. I remember just loving the twists and turns and kind of watching it all unfold. It's a book I flew through and I've read this author a few times before and it's definitely one that I continue to go back to. I think this author's gotten quite popular, so I can't pretend that I introduced them to booktube, but definitely an author to watch. This is a newer release, and I had so much fun reading it. Definitely want to read more by this author. If you have any recommendations, let me know down below. Next, let's talk about A Step Past Darkness by Vera Curran. This is one of the books I received as part of that New Year, New Fear thriller package. And of all the books in there, this is the one I was most anticipating. So I was very excited that it was finally coming out so I could read it. This book is set in the 1950s. We follow a group of friends on a day in summer when something happens and we see the aftermath that follows. Now, in terms of a story, I am always there for a coming of age narrative, especially when it has a female perspective to it, and I was very intrigued by this one. However, in terms of execution, what I think it failed at is the fact that character-driven coming of age stories require the characters to be interesting. I simply did not care for them. I found their motivations, their backstories, their quirks, and all of that to be very surface level and I was overall really let down. This book is fairly long, it's not excessive, but it felt long reading it because very little happens. And again, with a character-driven book, I'm fine with that if I just wanna spend time with the characters, but I didn't in this case. So it's not one that I can personally recommend. A big disappointment just given the fact that I'm always looking for female-driven coming of age stories. This is technically that, but in terms of the enjoyment factor giving me the feels and nostalgia that I want, I didn't get any of that from this book. It left me really dry and disappointed. Next, let's talk about Spider, and this is a book that I received from Datura Books, and this is one that was actually on their 2023 releases that I somehow missed, and so I'm so glad they were able to send it. Now, this is a thriller or piece of suspense that follows an aspiring actress whose husband is found dead, and she is seen as the major suspect, and so we follow the story. She is trying to perhaps prove her innocence and have the story go from there. This is one that sucked me in immediately. I really liked the writing style. Specifically, I thought it was 
was a good example of character development done right. I immediately liked this main character. Not that she is necessarily the most likable individual out there, but I found her to be relatable or just interesting. She is a mother, she has a spouse, and again, she's an actress. She's just multifaceted as an individual and that is woven into the story. I didn't necessarily know where it was going. In terms of the mystery, I wasn't entirely hooked in as much as I wanted to be. It's very much a story that I loved because I just want to spend time with the characters. The mystery behind it kind of fell to the wayside. I have small quibbles about some of the revelations and endings of the book in terms of my personal taste, but overall I just again enjoyed the story despite not having a knockout mystery twist ending. I should say that pretty much all crime fiction tends to get the thriller label, but if you're looking for a fast-paced page turner, I don't necessarily think you'll get that here. Again, if you're more of a character-driven reader, this is one that I encourage you to pick up. I thought it was beautiful. I love the diverse cultural representation within the story that just added more complexity and wanted me just, again, to keep reading and learn more about what was behind this story and this woman. Next, let's talk about The Quiet Tenant, and this is a thriller that I picked up randomly on a lark because, as I've talked about before on this channel, I have a strange fascination with kidnapping stories, particularly fictionalized ones are my preference. And so this is a novel that follows a woman who, at the beginning of the story, is told over a different perspective. She was kidnapped and left in this cabin. However, as the story begins, she gets an opportunity to leave the cabin with her captor, and he agrees to take her to live with him and his daughter. However, of course, she has to keep this all a secret and pretend to be a normal person and not reveal that she is actually kidnapped. Now, with a premise like that, I think you understand there is a requirement of suspension of belief because there is definitely the question with this whole story about why the character is not trying harder to get out or to let the daughter know what was going on. And there's times where, as the reader, I think, you know, we don't see ourselves in their shoes. And I definitely felt myself going, come on, just say something, do something, run. And not necessarily believing entirely the amount of Stockholm Syndrome that the character appears to have. And that again is I think set up in the story that they really want to suggest that this person is broken, they have forgotten themselves, and trying to make it believable that they are just going to pretend to be this tenant living quietly in the house. So in terms of a setup, once I got past the suspension disbelief, I had a really good time with it. It wasn't a five-star knockout read, but again, I like kidnapping stories, so I'm probably easier to please than other readers. You get the story from the perspective, again, of the girl who is kidnapped, or woman rather, as well as this daughter. And the way that the daughter story interconnects actually added for a unique perspective because I didn't necessarily know certain clues and things that were revealed later on, and you have her perspective, and I just found it to be interesting, again, creating just a different angle to the story that another author wouldn't have thought to do. So I overall really like this one. I flew through it, as I tend to with kidnapping stories. And if you share my love for these kind of plots, I do recommend checking this one out. I'd never heard of it before, and I definitely would love to check out more by this author if they have more published. Next, I read Bruises on a Butterfly by Chad Lutsky, and this is a novella that just came out this year. I got the opportunity to review it from the author, and this is a coming of age story that follows a child who is leaving this abusive life, and they are running away, and their friends are helping them along there. And this is an author who I have loved before and will continue to love. What I think they do so well is they write stories that I would describe as adjacent to horror, so Chad Lutsky tends to get lumped in with horror authors because I think he writes the kind of stories that will appeal to people who love horror, because really horror is about the heart. These stories are very emotional, and this author is amazing at writing these macabre stories that just deal with these emotionally abused characters dealing with these really heavy subjects. And again, in another author's hand, I could be horrified for how the abuse victim could be represented, but I just feel this author has such nuance and care with his characters. It feels so sensitive and thoughtful how everything is presented, so highly recommend his work. If you want to start with his newest release, this is excellent. There really is very little this author can do wrong in my books, and this one is just another little knockout hidden gem. Next, let's talk about Rainbirds, and this could be loosely described as a mystery suspense story. It follows an individual who finds out that their older sister has been murdered, and so they are called to the countryside of Japan where they were living, and they go there and they meet those that that person interacted with and are trying to puzzle out what happened to their sister. They talk to the police and so forth. And within the story, we get the present day while they are trying to puzzle this out, and we also get flashbacks of their childhood, and those are the parts that 
really sold me on this. It's interesting, they describe this sibling relationship, but there's actually a fairly large age gap. And so in a lot of ways, the sister took on the mother role, the parents were very absent. And so you have this amazing brother-sister relationship within the story. There's a part where they're talking about how they started cooking from home together so that the boy could have home-cooked meals. And it's just the most memorable scene and really sets up again the relationship that is to come. And then again, it's interesting because as the story continues, part of the conversation going on is the fact that while they were so close as kids, this boy or now man realizes that he has kind of lost that connection to his sister. They talk on the phone, but they don't really talk about much. And he really doesn't know who his sister was with and isn't able to piece together those elements. And so that is what he goes off to do when he travels there. And it's just a beautiful story between two characters. So again, like other books in this video, I'm going to say that the mystery itself was interesting, but honestly, it's a little bit deflating as it comes together. I don't feel like this book has a bang ending. Instead, it, it's a little bit of a slow fizzle out. Instead, what I loved about this book, though, was simply spending time with the characters. Again, both the characters were so interesting. I wanted to get to know this young woman, what happened to her, and just who she was, what she was doing with her life, and having it contrasted with this young man, and the, again, the relationship relationship between them was just so richly developed. I often have said that I'm not a character-driven reader and I really have to stop saying that because books like this make me want to stop everything and just spend time with the characters. I don't care if they're doing nothing in the plot. This one is very slow moving. There's no giant guns and car chases or any crazy action scenes. Instead, it is so quiet and subtle and soft and I really feel like it represents that Japanese cultural feeling that I adore from the outside and I think that this book is just a beautiful story of siblings so cannot recommend this one enough loved it not going to be for everyone but again if you're looking for a slow book that is more about the relationship than the mystery this is one I hope you'll check out and love next let's talk about Maggie's Grave by David Sodergren this is a book I received from the author and then read with my patron book club this is a witchy story that starts out with a woman who is potentially a witch and then of course is killed for that crime and then the story goes from there. They follow the story in this dead Scottish town. We follow the young people who are dealing with the aftermath because of course once a witch is dead perhaps they're not gonna stay dead and so we deal with that afterwards. This is a book where I enjoyed the beginning. It's easy, it's fun, it's just again a good page turner and then we got to the middle of the book and if you've read the story you know what I'm talking about. My entire book club knows what I'm talking about. It's just a really messed up part and it really threw me. I will compare it without trying to give spoilers to something like what you would expect from Bentley Little and so if you're looking for weird stuff that is just really gross and disturbing you're gonna get that here. It's not entirely what I expected from this author. I've read some of their other work like The Forgotten Island and that book is just incredibly safe. There's no weird stuff in it so I was really thrown by that. So with this book, I had to really shift gears. It went from being a more serious book to something that felt very ridiculous and over the top. Not my favorite kind of horror. I do prefer something a little bit more serious. And so I kind of had to, again, shift my mindset and just go along with the story. I liked it for what it was doing in a way, but you can hear it in my voice that I didn't love where the author went with this. Some of my book club adored it. I think a little bit more than I did. It was fun at times, but it was it was too much. I'm not a fan of over the top horror in the way that it was done here. Not that I can't handle it, I just find it hard to suspend my belief and kind of go along with it if that makes sense. It just got really crazy. And finally, I read Carrie and Comfort by Dan Simmons, and this is an epic horror story that starts out in the past. There is this individual who is going to die or perish in a Nazi camp. However, they end up getting saved in a way, but basically they become a vampire, and so we follow them now in the present day as they're living the life afterwards with that. I have really come to love vampire stories a lot more than I thought I did. I've made whole videos talking about how I don't like vampire stories and then recommending a bunch of vampire stories I love. So once again, I'm finding a story that really worked for me 
In terms of the plot, premise, all of that, I didn't think I'd connect with the story, but there was something about, again, the writing. I just found it to be so easy to fly through. This book is incredibly long and I could not stop reading it. It took me a while to get through because it was, I believe, almost 900 pages, but I just found it very enjoyable. There was something almost cozy about it, which is completely the wrong descriptor to use because this book is really dark in terms of tone and content. There's definitely sexual content and different trigger warnings throughout depending on what you're concerned about. And so it's not a fun read, but I think that it just felt comforting the way that it leaned into the vampire tropes in a way that felt very familiar to me. And reading such a long book, I kind of could get lost in gross in the story. I've had lots of different things going on in my personal life over the last few months. And so finding a book that I can just get lost into and read night after night is such a good feeling. And so I definitely appreciate everyone who recommended this book to me on my last vampire video. So good, loved it. And I hope some of you check it out if you haven't yet. Don't be intimidated by the length, it's so worth your time. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And drop a comment just to let me know what are you reading these days, especially if it's something dark and creepy. I want to hear all about it. If you're new to my channel and do want to stick around and subscribe, I do read a lot of horror thrillers, science fiction, fantasy, and other dark things. If you want to drop a comment but you don't know what to say, you can just leave a little emoji like a ghost or a vampire. It lets me know you're here and lets YouTube know as well. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.